Okay, so that not, not too much time on that one. The next one is uh, under cluster C is dependent personality disorders. You may have heard of that one. And I, and I got a couple of examples. Um, some of these are better than others, but you remember the show All in the Family with Archie Bunker? His wife, Edith, she was sort of dependent. And we'll talk about it in a minute, what it is. There's also, uh, do you remember the show Roseanne? Um, there was a character, and I don't remember this one, but this my friend came up with this one, but uh, Crystal was, a, was the name of a character on that show. Do you, do you remember? Uh, so some people remember. It depends on kind of what we all watch, I guess. And then there's a new, uh, new show called Scrubs that I like a lot. There's a character on there, a resident, named Elliot. She's probably not classically dependent, but certainly has some traits of that. Um, so keep those folks in mind, and we'll go through this in a second, to go through these symptoms here. So dependent personality disorder folks, you know, they're, they're kind of submissive, kind of clingy. Um, they have this, this, this really, this need to be taken care of by someone. Um, they have a lot of trouble making decisions for themselves, even everyday decisions. Uh, they need a lot of advice and reassurance from other people to do so. Um, there are all different levels of this, by the way. So it's not, again, I mean, it's sort of back to the traits thing. You can have some of these symptoms without necessarily having all of them. And just have like dependent traits, let's say. Um, these folks are kind of passive and they allow other people to, to make uh, decisions for them a lot of times. And some examples of things might be, I don't know if anybody knows anybody like this, but there may be some adults that let their, that still let their parents make decisions about um, you know, where they live or what jobs they have or who, what friends they should have, things like that. These are adults now. And then by the same token, adolescents who let their parents still, still pick up their clothes for them or uh, decide how they should spend their free time and things like that. That's not, I mean, I, I'm not trying to criticize that. I guess what I'm just saying is that most people go through this process where they start to become independent and make some of these decisions themselves, most of these decisions themselves. And these folks have a hard time with that. They, they are so fearful of losing the support of the person they depend on that they will, you know, even if they know the person is wrong about some decision they're making, they'll go along with it just because they don't want to upset or shake or rattle that person because they're afraid they may scare them off or alienate them in some way, and then they'll be left all alone. So as you, as you can see, they, they're sort of really petrified or scared about, the, about being alone and, being, and having to fend for themselves. So they do all kinds of things to sort of prevent that. Um, and that, that even if it means you know, some other harm comes to them, you know, um, they have a hard time doing things for themselves or projects, uh, starting projects for themselves as well. Um, they're, they're almost afraid to be, to look like they know what they're doing. Because if they look like they know what they're doing, the person they depend on is going to say, ah, they don't need me anymore, and they're afraid they're, you know, again, this person's going to leave their side and they're going to be on their own. So they, not saying they'll fake it or whatever, but they, um, they might have some need to not do as well as they could otherwise do. Uh, and if they're with the right person, they might become enabled by that person. In other words, that person may go ahead and do everything for them, thinking that they can't do it themselves, and then a suspicious cycle, you know. Um, okay. They feel sort of helpless and alone. Uh, when alone, they're, they feel sort of helpless and fear that they can't take care of themselves. Um, if they lose, let's say they lose the person they're depending on, let's say it's a spouse or whatever, if they lose that person, they're going to very quickly gravitate towards somebody else. That, and, and interestingly enough, this might be somebody who's really into control. So they might, this is, it's a person who's dependent, they might gravitate towards somebody in a relationship that likes to control other people. So unfortunately that's not really healthy. So a lot of times this might be women, it's very, very common to diagnose this, for this to be diagnosed with women. And they'll be in one abusive relationship, and you know, let's say they lose that person for some reason, I don't know they may bounce right into another abusive relationship, and everybody's going, why? Why would you do that? Well, it's the dependency, right? I mean, they've, they've got this need to be taken care of and this fear of being alone, so they'll go with somebody that, whoever they can find quickly, that will take care of them, and that sometimes is somebody who's not so healthy and, and somebody who actually has some trouble with feeling like they have to control other people. Um, again, they're, they're excessively worried and, and fearful that, that they're going to be left alone to care for themselves. They doubt themselves. They think of themselves as kind of stupid or uh, they belittle their own abilities. Um, they're very pessimistic about themselves. And they take criticism from somebody else as proof that they're worthless. This may 
how do people get this way? There's not, nobody absolutely knows, but chronic physical illness as a kid, or if you had a lot of separation anxiety as a kid, those kind of things can lead, sometimes to lead to dependent personality. Um, again, it's diagnosed more commonly in females, but also see, and it's, there tends to be, because depression and anxiety are higher in women, that draws, draws women into psychiatric clinics, and then of course they're gonna be diagnosed more often with things like this. Than maybe men would because men are too men wouldn't come to the psychiatrist anyway. You know, um, it actually is one of the most common personality disorders uh, seen in psychiatric clinics. Um, real quickly, I'm going to talk about, uh, and I didn't actually. This is sort of ad living a little bit, but there's also something called codependency. Okay, so we've talked about dependent personality disorder. That's just what I talked about. But some people think that there's also a another sort of personality disorder called codependent personality. Um, other people don't agree with that and think there is no such thing and really all these people are just the same, they're, they're dependent personality. I, I think in my experience in seeing folks that there probably is some little difference. There is a difference between codependent people and dependent people. Codependent people um, um, tend to be, not. it's not so much that, they're, that they're, they can't do anything themselves, it's more that they they're, they're constantly caring for someone else, you know, or uh, sacrificing their own needs for everyone else, um, putting them, putting everyone else first and them last. So uh, in a way, it sort of sounds opposite of a narcissistic person, right? Instead of putting themselves first, they put everybody else first. These folks tend to come from from homes where they're, and tend to be women. I, again, I don't know why, but a lot of times it tends to be women. But um, they come from homes a lot of times where there's uh, substance abuse growing up. So mom or dad was alcoholic, let's say, and they grow up kind of, I don't know whether it comes from you know, having to take care of dad all the time, when dad was drunk, let's say, come home drunk or something, and the child grows up thinking, I've got to take care of dad, I've got to, I've got to kind of get in between mom and dad and keep the fighting from occurring because they're fighting because of this drinking or whatever else. You know, this person kind of gets in this mode or this, this uh, way of living that they, that they feel like they've got to be the caretaker, the, the peacemaker, so to speak. Um, and unfortunately, they end up putting everyone else first so much and themselves last that they end up getting depressed a lot of times. Um, these folks really need to, you know, they have to learn at some point that they can't do everything for everybody. They've got to put themselves first sometimes. I sort of think of it as a spectrum, you know, like there's a spectrum between completely selfish and completely unselfish, right? These folks are very unselfish. They'll put everybody else first and themselves last. Well, that's just as unhealthy, really, as being very, very selfish. So you need to kind of come towards the middle a little bit more. And when it's appropriate, you care about the other person, you take care of the other person, but it also, when it's appropriate, you take care of yourself, too. Um, any comments about that? I know I know some of you folks probably know. There's actually a book about codependent no more that I used to uh, have people read. Especially, you know, a spouse of somebody who has alcoholism or some other chemical dependency. You know, these are these are uh, folks that that need to read this stuff. Parents, you know, that have kids that have uh, chemical dependency, for instance, too. You know, the parents sometimes are uh, you know kind of codependent. It's hard for them to yeah, you know, quite or, yeah. And that that does apply with mental illness also, right? Not only substance abuse, but it can it can apply to anything. Absolutely, yes. Yeah, so you mean the caregiving part? Well, I think growing up in oh. a mental illness environment. It could be, absolutely. It could be, it really, I think it's anything where you have to take care of somebody or, or intervene and, and be the, uh, the peacemaker, uh, you know, the conflict avoiding person, you know. But, but also, I, get, I think what you're getting at is, is what if a child is in a home where mom has lots of real bad depression uh, or, um, you know, some other, it could even be some physical illness where mom or dad has some physical chronic physical illness and the, and the child has to feel like, the child feels like he or she has to take care of them a lot growing up. You know, that certainly could lead to it as well, I think. Yeah.